The emergence of hundreds of thousands, even millions of bats from a hole in the ground is amazing on many levels. There are legends going back to like a lot of these caves. People found them because it looked like something was on fire in the distance and people basically followed the smoke. And then they realized, oh, that's not smoke. I would say sometimes the cave simply barfs all the bats that are inside and it's overwhelming to the senses. It is late June. We are in the Texas Hill Country in the south central part of the state. This is land of many limestone rock formations, many large caves. They also happen to be the home of one of the most incredible creatures on the planet, the Brazilian free-tailed bat. Around sunset, the colony will emerge from the cave. They will come out in a column and they will sort of disappear off into the distance. The bats will fly 50 miles every night over and over again just for foraging. When you first see it, it's so stunning and um, you know puzzling. You start asking yourself the questions, how is this working? When we first started studying these bats with high speed video, we saw how they flew as individuals. And what we wanted to see was how they flew in nature with hundreds of friends next to them. It almost doesn't make sense. They have really long slender wings. They're very well optimized for long distance, efficient flight, but it would not be very maneuverable in terms of how quickly they can make turns and respond to obstacles in their flight path. And when you look at uh, an emergence of free tail bats out of their roost, you can't help but wonder how are these, all of these individuals managing this incredibly dense, challenging environment with the morphology that they have been given. When the latest generation of high-speed cameras became available, that allowed us to take a very technical instrument from the laboratory into the field, there's so much gear associated with this type of research. Traveling across the country with 2,000 pounds of gear, holding it up the side of a mountain. In 100 degree weather. With a team of people working around the clock. And then we start setting up the equipment. Pretty quick, right? A few yeah. seconds. Can you give the... me that, Mary Poppins? We point the cameras at the cave. The bats are flying in three dimensional space. And so, in order to understand how they're interacting with one another and their environment, we set up four cameras because we're interested in where the bats are moving in relation to hundreds of other bats. All of that is just the very, very beginning of a long process of meticulously archiving, calculating, and the analysis of the data. High-speed videography is essential for understanding how the Brazilian free tail bat emerges in these large columns. It's allowing us to slow them down, to sort of warp or change that time so that we can see it at a, at a more fine scale of, of temporal resolution. After years of filming and analyzing, what we have found out is that yes, it is almost miraculous how they can pull it off, but it is not the way we expected that it happens. After we've digitized the footage and actually look at the distances between the bats, we were like, that's really close. We expected that they fly around each other and they never have physical contact. And we have found, shocking to us, 
that bats crash into each other quite often. It's a messy situation, but generally it's very safe and it works really well. You don't find a lot of injured bats on the ground. Like, yeah, perhaps they can make it so that their wings never touch anything else, but it would be pretty expensive to do that. And the opposite doesn't bring many, if any, negative consequences. And often nature works in that way. It just needs to be good enough. This here would be the relative velocity change. Mm -hmm. There are many aspects of the behavior of bats inside and outside of the cave that we're still investigating. What visualizations have allowed us to do is navigate through incredibly dense data sets looking for signals that we can explore experimentally and empirically. We would see them move. We're learning a little bit more about how the morphology of the cave influences what that behavior looks like on the outside. We are still finding out the reason why all of these individuals come together in these sites. As a scientist who uses visual technology, I feel like I'm fortunate to be able to communicate and share, visually at least, how incredible that event is. It's beyond magical, never gets old. <laughs>